Q&A to start. Welcome back, everybody, to the main room. We are so excited that everybody's back. I see a lot of activity in all these cameras and all these classrooms, which is so exciting to see. Right now is your live Q&A session where we have two amazing mentors here that are gonna answer any of the questions you have regarding college. This is your time to chat with them. So please do not be shy, type some questions in chat. I see the hands are moving quickly and some cards are being put together, but don't hesitate to get to that keyboard to ask them the questions. I'm gonna stop speaking and let them take it away. We have Lorenas and Manjita here and they have some slides to share with you and they're gonna introduce themselves. So Lorenas, if you wanna share your screen, you can take it away. All righty. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lorenas. I am one of the college mentors with you today for your Q&A session. Um, just a little bit about myself. I am a junior at the University of Notre Dame, uh, studying electrical engineering and music theory, uh, and with the minors in German and energy studies. I've been involved with Engineering Tomorrow for several months. Uh, my main interests in engineering are Power grid in renewable energy, uh, which is very related to the electric vehicles lab that you're doing today, uh, and then also audio technology and how we can use um, it just like things used electronically to help bring music to people. Um, just a bit about my background. Um, in my sophomore year, I was doing research on uh, uh, infrared nano antennas. Uh, with one of my uh, electrical engineering professors and working on how to make those mo more efficient and uh, kind of figuring out how to quantify uh, their efficiency and performance. Uh, so I was involved with research there. Um, over the last summer, I was with the company Burns & McDonald, which is an engineering firm out of their Chicago office. Um, and I was working on their utility telecommunications team. Um, and so if you don't know what that is, utility, so like the power company, electric company, um, working on the telecommunications that they use to control the power grid uh, so that the different parts of uh, different parts of the network can speak to each other and in case something goes wrong uh, so that there's a system in place uh, to notify all of the people who need to know like the control center and so on. Um, this past uh, March over uh, spring break, I was part of a seminar policy uh, course at Notre Dame through the Center for Social Concerns at Notre Dame. Uh, and there, uh, we were talking a lot about energy and climate change policy, and we actually took a trip to Washington, D.C. to speak to a lot of lobbyists and uh, con congressional staffers about uh, their work in energy and climate change and how, uh, what kind of paths they see forward. Um, and so this coming summer, I will be uh, in Germany working with the Fraunhofer Institute, uh, working on power system modeling software and figuring out how to, um, like, enable to uh, create tools to see for utilities to use um, to make sure that when they are planning their uh, expansions to the power grid, that they are uh, doing the best that they can. Uh, and then just a couple of pictures up here. Uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but in the upper um, upper left corner, that's just a, a, a waveform from one of my electrical engineering labs. Uh, and in the bottom left corner, there's a, um, Oh, I cropped that a bit poorly, but uh, is one of the uh, projects that I worked on was designing a vehicle. Um, it doesn't run on solar power, but it still ran on batteries using the Arduino system and how to control it with a video game controller. Um, you can also see that uh, picture of me um, uh, conducting one of the pieces that I composed uh, through my music theory degree at a recital. Um, in the middle, there's a picture of me at the Department of Energy. Um, uh, during my Washington uh, trip uh, for the energy, energy seminar, uh, on the on the right side of the screen is the uh, building that I worked in over the summer, and at the bottom is uh, the team that I worked with uh, participating in the J.P. Morgan run of 5K over the summer. Uh, and then you can also see in the middle um, that's a picture of the nano antenna. Uh, you can see that the scale is like five micrometers, so it's really tiny. And then uh, one of the cabinet designs that I worked on for uh, telecommunication equipment uh, that's attached to distribution line poles. Oh um, yeah, so that's just a little bit about me and I'll hand it off to Ranjita. Thank you so much, Lauren. So hi everyone. My name is Manjita Kamara. I'm a senior at Columbia University studying earth and environmental engineering. I've been involved with engineering tomorrow for over two years, which is so crazy to say, but yeah two years um, and my interest in engineering are 
and sustainability, green infrastructure design, water treatment and water reuse and things like that. Okay. So I put a lot of stuff on this um, timeline, but basically this is just a culmination of all the things that I've been able to do over my whole college experience from getting into the school to navigating um, things like financial aid and work study and being able to get a job. And in my freshman year, my first on-campus job was actually at a geoscience laboratory. So I was working on sediments that were, that came from the Sahara Desert in Africa. We basically did research on that and they basically dated the eating patterns of humans and animals from thousands of years ago. So that was really cool. Um, so I dabbled in research, but I knew that I didn't want to be a researcher or a, get a PhD. So I did that mostly for work purposes. And then I explored other things. I worked for a nonprofit that focused on sustainable development in countries like Costa Rica and Ghana. And I was on the Ghana team researching solar panels and stuff because I'm very, like I said, that I'm interested in sustainability and sustainable development, especially when it comes to um, under-resourced or uh, marginalized communities around the world. So that was a really fun internship. Um, in my school, I'm involved with the National Society of Black Engineers, as well as Engineers Without Borders. Um, also, I was on the Ghana team for that too. Um, and Engineering Tomorrow, the symbol is there. Uh, but my actual engineering internships and like experience really came last year and the year before where I was an environmental engineering intern and then a construction management intern for a building company in New York City. So we built all kinds of structures and I pretty much assisted project managers and project engineers on um, the whole, like, I guess, management of the whole construction process for the buildings that we built. And the company also built um, parks and all different kinds of development from schools to residential condominiums and all kinds of things like that. And I will be graduating in less than a month, which I'm very excited about. And I have got, I got a full-time job with a civil engineering firm and I will start working as a project engineer in water treatment and wastewater treatment in this summer. So, yeah. Okay, and these are just pictures from my lab experience, um, the different clubs I've been involved with at school, my internships, and then I put a graduation photo here because that's the most important thing and the main thing for me on the horizon. So, yeah. And thank you. Okay, so we do have some questions in the chat. If you um, wanna go ahead and, and start with those questions, Manjita, go ahead. And again, I'm gonna invite anybody to please type in chat with, for any questions for Manjita and for Lorena's, but I definitely know we have some. And I think the first one started with, which classes in high school translate well into engineering, which I think some teachers started hopping in there, but I think you guys can add your own little, uh, your own little insight into that. Yes. Lauren, Ness, do you want to? Uh, so, um, the like foundational courses that um, everyone is taking, like the freshman and sophomore year for engineering courses, are going to be calculus uh, up to like calculus three. Um, and so that equates to in the AP system, like calc C. No, it's a different system. I completely forgot it. It's been a while. Uh, but your uh, AP calc courses, um, AP physics C, uh, so like calculus based physics. Is also important. Um, you're, I think most engineering disciplines are required to take some form of chemistry, so we can use AP Chem credit for that. Um, mm -hmm. Even though, like, as an electrical engineer, I don't, um, I don't directly use any chemistry in like any of the stuff that I do. But it's just like a thing that they expect you to know, so you can have somewhat informed conversations about it when it comes up. Um, so I'd say those like. AP classes, I, I was in the AP system. I don't know exactly what it looks like in the IB system, but I'm sure like the equivalents of the calculus, physics, chemistry are the oh. most important uh, because especially if you get credits that you can get ahead in your curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Vegeta? Yes, um, I just wanted to add also for people who may be interested in some sort of biomedical engineering, AP bio is useful for that. And I know like engineering curriculums are different at all universities, but um, even though my major doesn't really have much to do with biology, if I did take AP Bio in in um, high school, it would have actually covered a science credit that I needed in college. So really, if you can take as many math and science APs as you can, um, I recommend that you do that because it's definitely going to help you. Um, 
Yeah, I see another like AP1, AP2, or APC. Um, if you can take APC, uh, like Physics C, I think that's going to prepare you the best. Um, it, it also is the most difficult, but um, there's a lot of calculus that ends up being used in um, being used in engineering. So even if you don't have it, uh, even if you don't get the credit for it, still being exposed to it like multiple times and taking it again in college is still super helpful. All right. I don't know if you guys see the next question in chat, but it's about scholarships. What scholarships do you suggest or do you recommend? Any tips on scholarships? How about that? Yes. Okay. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, okay. um, so just go for as many scholarships as you can. Um, so um, we fill out the FAFSA for uh, financial aid through your, uh, the institution you're applying to, uh, but then also apply to um, apply to those smaller scholarships that are like 500 or a thousand dollars. Because when you're looking at like the giant price of your tuition bill, it doesn't a one thousand dollars doesn't seem like a lot. Um, but if you are putting in um, like forty hours of of like just filling out one thousand uh, dollar essays, one thousand dollar scholarship essays, and then you only get one, uh, that's the same as if you would have worked for um, forty hours a week and made twenty five dollars an hour. Um, so just thinking about like just try to get as many of those smaller scholarships as you can uh, because they really do accumulate. Yeah, okay. I think um, it's very important to also look for specific scholarships based on your circumstances because there's just, I feel like when you go online, there's just so many things. It's like, how do you know what is a good scholarship to apply to and like, or what's something that will fit your needs? Um, so coming from a low income first generation background, I tended to gravitate towards scholarships that had to do with that and like helping students and people like me from that kind of background. So one that I always tell people about is QuestBridge, which is a scholarship that pretty much exposes students to all the, all the not all, but like many different private schools in the United States that cover your financial aid fully. So that really opened my eyes to the possibilities of going to any kind of college that I wanted would have wanted to, because despite the fact that private schools, many private schools are very expensive, um, my school included, um, if you come from a background where your parents don't make too much money and don't make a lot of money to like pay for that tuition, the school will actually help you pay. And for my most of my four years, I paid almost nothing, basically nothing to go to Columbia because Columbia has full financial aid and they will honor that no matter what kind of background you go to. I mean, no, no matter what kind of background, financial background your family has. So definitely looking at need-based colleges and colleges that cover full financial aid is... I think a very integral part of like scholarships. Um, yeah, and then definitely look in your own community because as Lauren has said, small scholarships are really the way to go. It helps like with the, with the application pool and increasing your chances. So definitely look at any scholarships that may be available to you from your local government or local town and city. Yeah. Very nice points, both of you. So I don't know if you guys got to see the next question, which is, do you think it's more beneficial to take a dual enrollment course, which is college classes in high school or AP level classes instead? What's your thoughts on that? Hmm. For specifically the AP computer science, I did not take that course. Um, but uh, the question is how well like those credits translate to the institution you're going to be studying at. Uh, like, most institutions will accept AP credit, um, but different institutions will like accept different levels. Um, so just a comparison that I know, uh, University of Illinois uh, at Urbana-Champaign accepts most uh, exam scores of like a three or higher. Um, University of Notre Dame only accepts AP credit if you scored a five. Um, so uh, that type of difference. But then also if you're doing a dual enrollment course, um, sometimes the credits will be able to transfer over, but some, depending on the institution, there might be certain like regulations that might make it a bit of a hassle. Um, if you can do a dual enrollment course, I think it's great. If you're picking between one or the other, mm -hmm. hmm, AP Computer Science recently switched to Python. Um, and so I think that makes it more viable than it used to be because it was in Java and not many schools are still teaching that. Um, so 
I think it depends a bit on the language. I think I, if it's if it's a Python based course, you go for it. Or like learning C. Um, if it's anything else like Java or R, not too sure to be honest. Yeah, I basically have the same sort of sentiment. And as someone from Boston High School said, it it is more so dependent on the school you're going to for sure. So whenever it comes to choosing what is like whether to do dual enrollment or AP, look at the colleges you're interested in going to see what is favored there and what is more likely to be accepted by that school. So we have a comment from Barbara Goldman just asking uh, for computer engineering, um, would you recommend calculus and physics? Um, I see it I is nodding yet. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're still going to make you take those courses. Yeah. Um, so it's, okay. I think it's better to take those courses in high school if you can and get the credit for them because um, you're more, you're, you have a better support network in high school because you have a teacher who is like probably going to see you like multiple times a week and is like mostly invested in your education. At, at, a, at the minimum, we hope. Uh, but in college, some professors, the unfortunate reality is just like, do not really care about you when you're one student in a lecture of 300. Um, and so when you have, I recommend taking those calculus and physics if you can in high school, because your, your teacher is more likely to care about you than a professor, especially for those big classes. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, sorry, Manji, go ahead. Oh, no. Yeah, I was just going to say, no matter what kind of engineering you do, um, chemistry, physics, calculus, those are baseline. So you, it's almost inescapable unless, as Lorna said, you do the AP, you get the AP credit for it in high school. All right. Our next question is from Highland Park that asks, what would you say is more helpful, academic classes out of the book or more interactive electrical labs? I would definitely say um, labs and yeah, interactive courses because I'm a hands-on person and I like to see what I'm learning and see how it's being applied in real life. Um, when things are taught to me out of the book, or this has been my experience in college, um, I definitely find it harder to be able to conceptualize how things work. So I have found a lot more success in my classes that are project-based where I'm actually applying what I'm learning to actual projects, you know, tangible things. So yeah, what's yeah. your I agree with that mostly um, because most engineering work that you end up doing is going to be like a project-based sort of deal. So like getting that experience is just more fun working with the group as well. Um, that's not to say that like lecture-based material isn't without its use, um, especially if you're going more in the academic research route. Um, being able to have like a good theoretical understanding of something is super important. Um, and if you're working in research, then uh, like there might not actually be a project yet that like you can work on hands on. You're, that you're still in that um, like theoretical phase. So um, depending on what you want to do, but I'd say overall, uh, like hands on labs are always the way to go. Well, this kind of ties into the next comment from Atlantic Technical College. Uh, and tech, they're taking a hands-on machining class in high school. Will that help them en in engineering in college? Yeah, that first of all, that's really cool that you get that experience in high school. I didn't get to do anything like that in high school. But yes, it's definitely going to be helpful with engineering in college. Like just the whole experience of it, I think, will be useful. Like Lauren has said, you're going to like if this is a class where you're working in a group, go, go, go. Um, most engineering projects are group work based. So that's going to be very helpful, um, being exposed to that kind of dynamic already. And it seems fun. I think what you guys are doing is really fun. So yeah, it will definitely be helpful. Hey, Shawty, you uh, I know that the, um, the mechanical engineers, my mechanical engineering friends right now, they are like in a lab course where they're learning how to use the machining equipment uh, in like the innovation hub. So yeah, it's definitely super helpful. Um, I think it's a bit more helpful for like things like mechanical and civil engineering that are using those types of machines. Um, that's not really something that I'm going to be doing as an electrical engineer, but if I, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so it depends a little bit for the discipline. All right, I'm gonna skip to another question from Fulton High School. Did either of you take Project Lead the Way High School? 
it, a project lead the way in high school and was that helpful? Did either of you experience project lead the way in your high schools or no? Nope. No, all right. Um, uh, what type of senior projects do, engineer, do engineering students have? If you wanna hop in there with a senior project. <laughs> I'm actually working on my senior project right now. Um, so at my university, and I think this is for most schools, Lauren, as you can let me know if your school also does the same thing, but all engineering, almost all engineering majors are required to participate in the undergraduate design expo and all majors have just one class in senior year specifically dedicated to your senior design project. Um, so yeah, my project right now is based on soil remediation in New York City. Um, we're looking at different ways in which Contamin metal contaminants can be removed from the soils in order to develop more safer foundations for new things to be built on. So yeah, that's a small summary of a really big project that me and my team are working on. Um, I have not gotten to my, um, I haven't gotten into senior year yet, so I haven't done my senior uh, design project. Um, I do know that the one example that I remember uh, from like a couple of years ago was uh, they designed an electric guitar that um, automatically produces the sheet music that it that is being played on it or something like that, which I thought was super cool. Um, I know that at Notre Dame, if you you can do research with a professor for like three credits uh, instead of doing a senior design project, I only know of one person doing that. Um, yeah, I don't. That's I don't know if that translates to all. Of all right. Thank you for that. And I'm going to go to Goddamn girl, um, got to take got damn girl. We're going to move to the question. Do AP class lab grades count for college credit? I think you guys have answered that, right? Yes. It depends on what school you go to and then what level what uh score you got in your AP exam, correct? Yeah. Uh all right, and then we have this question that I, I I actually love this question. I think one of our ET staff members asked, and this was about your time management. How about school and work life balance? Yes. Okay. How do you keep a work life balance? Um, I think in the beginning of college, this was definitely a little bit harder for me to um, balance out. But like over time, I've just managed to. So as soon as I get my schedule for the new semester, I block out all the free time I have, and then. Dedicate those to during the depending on what time of day is that. Like if I have free time in the morning, yeah, um, I'm not productive in the morning. I just tend to use that for like rest and like just um more chill things. And um and then like in the evening, I tend to go to the libraries more or like the lounges and student centers more to study. So just having different times. If your brain is like more used to certain times for productivity, it's good to just honor that and not like fight against it. Um, so I think that helps with just allowing that you're not wasting time. So with that, then I have a lot of free time on the weekends to go out with my friends, which I do every week, basically. Like I don't, I will never choose to stress over an assignment over like enjoying my life. So I go out and do that. Um, but some ways that I make, I combine the two is sometimes during the weekdays, if I'm like getting really flustered with all the schoolwork I have, I try to like go to a nice cafe downtown. Since I go to school in New York City, there's like an endless amount of places I can study. So I go do that. I'm in a nice cafe, have those good vibes around me, and then I can alleviate stress that way. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of things you can do. Those are, those are just some of the things I do to keep a good work-life balance. Um, for me, uh, the thing you said about like honoring like how your body works, um, I like over the past three years, I've transitioned transitioned from being a night person to a morning person. Uh, so I don't know how that happened. I really did not choose that to happen. Um, but now, like I like am always doing like a lot of my assignments in the morning because I have a bit of gap. Um, but yeah, I have to put everything in my Google Calendar so I can like keep track of everything. Um, you want to like take advantage of everything that you can. But at the same time, you don't want to overstress yourself, which is like that difficult balance to achieve. Um, I think it's important to have some like fun, non-academic related outlets. Um, I joined the swing dancing club a couple of years ago just because I thought it would be like a fun thing to try out. And so I, I always love going there because it's just like a chance to just like relax and do something different. Um, so try to have some sort of like outlet like that that's not directly related to your work 
uh, like a club that isn't like another engineering club, something like that. Um, another thing is I recently saw this metaphor somewhere online about like the, like the juggling metaphor of like all your responsibilities and how uh, certain balls, like as you add more responsibilities, you're like juggling more. And uh, sometimes it's okay to let certain balls fall to the ground. Um, but there are other ones that are like made of glass that are like more important that you can't drop. So being able to rec recognize what priorities you have and what's actually super important. Um, I'm not saying to like not to like skip homework assignments, but if you if you really have like like job interviews or you have like big things happening in your life, or like prioritize those. Try to get accommodations where you can. Most prof professors will just give you extensions on assignments. Um, and being able to recognize like it's truly important. Not like your weekly like calculus homework assignment is not that important compared to like a job interview um, or something like that. Well, I agree with that. I have to say, I think that was a great analogy with that juggling. And I agree, sometimes you have some things that are just really important. You gotta watch out for those <laughs> before you, you think about anything else. So I think that the rest of the questions that were being asked in the chat are more uh, project-based about the electric vehicles. And I'm actually gonna save those for our mentors to answer in the breakout rooms. So I think this is a great time for us to stop and say thank you to Manjita and to Lorena for leading such a great session. I wanna just add a special congratulations to Manjita. I hope you're super excited about graduating. I'm so glad that we've been able to see your growth over these past two years with Engineering Tomorrow. And so I'm gonna uh, stop.